Good afternoon, friends. Here I am again. So let's go over the, uh, the presentation today. As usual, we review our performance recently and the uh, important thing to look at the global economic outlook uh, as well as the domestic environment. And there's a specific feature that we are including today, which is the comparison of the situation now versus past crisis. Now we look also at some key issues and then end with our macroeconomic forecasts. So first of all, we see that uh, we grew by, as was mentioned, 8.3% GDP, but look at the other numbers covering the red bars, which is domestic demand growth, way above the those of the GDP. Even in the past, you can see it uh, because uh, domestic demand is comprised of household consumption, government spending, and investment spending. So our growth has been domestic demand driven and that continues today. So the, okay, part of that uh, narrative is that consumer spending has recovered to its levels in the first quarter of 2022, uh, first quarter of 2019 uh, with the fast growth that we saw uh, for consumer spending at 10.3%. Uh, investment spending in the first quarter of 2022 remained uh, double digit at 20% growth, but it's still some 9% below the 2019 first quarter. And so we now move into the global economic outlook where the game changer has been the invasion of Russia, of Ukraine, which has been the source of the global slowdown and inflation. Uh, the IMF has cut its uh, world growth projection by 1.3%. The e US and the EU uh, growth has been cut by 1.5% and China's growth by minus 1.2%. How long will the global inflation last? Well, it really depends on the war and the uh, how fast alternative sources of energy get into the markets. So here we have a, a projection of the trend uh, based on 2017 to 2019 in the straight in the dotted line. And you can see that even by 2023 next year, yeah, uh, with the growth, we're still below that uh, trend lines. So um, looking at it from the specific uh, countries or country groupings, we have uh, there the 2021 growth recovery, fastest in, well, China and the US. Um, and for 2022, the, the outlook had been cut, as I mentioned earlier, is for the world, for the US, uh, for Japan, fairly stable, um, and uh, for China, less than 5%. Um, and, and the for the ASEAN five minus minus five minus three percent. Okay, so for twenty twenty three next year, uh, it's still a growth story continues, but it's focused on China and ASEAN, where you can see the upgrading of the acceleration from four point four to five point one in China, and for ASEAN from five point three to five point nine. Okay, so. That said, I think that's clear. The external outlook is clear, uh, but let's take a look at the Philippine situation. Okay. In the issues I'll cover will be how long will inflation last? Are we better off than previous crisis? Will uh, BBM administration be positive for growth recovery? And then are we heading for a, a credit upgrade? So for the first part with the uh, inflation, the DSP has revised twice its forecast by to 5% this year and 4.2 next year. Uh, and the reduction uh, in 2023 is more or less in line with IMF's overall reduction. But they make caveat on the upside, uh, the, the war is prolonged, which means uh, more elevated oil and commodity prices, uh, supply constraints that uh, also are partly ca caused by that. And then, more internal to each major economy is that the labor shortage, they, they find a mismatch of skills and the new economy's requirements. 
Okay, like taking a look at the crude oil prices, which is the immediately impacted by the war. And we see how the Department of Energy of the United States has raised its uh, forecast, particularly for next year. The average is uh, nine, more than 9% higher than the year previous forecast. And for 2022, the average is more than 2% higher. Uh, but in our case, of course, uh, we take a look at the forecast, which uh, hours happen to coincide with the of the BSP at 5% for this year. Uh, for next year, uh, it's more along 4%. So, but the Philippine inflation rate is being driven primarily by food, food and crude oil prices. And the good thing about food prices is that it's not about rice. It's been about uh, vegetables, meat, and uh, fish, uh, which are solvable domestically. Uh, the crude oil prices uh, uh, may, may probably have seen their peak. If we look at the graphs, something like that is suggested. Now we take a look at the present situation compared to the past crisis in terms of one, the growth rates of the real sector, real GDP growth in better than 1980s. Uh, we're not as good as the Asian crisis and world financial crisis. Consumption spending certainly better than the previous crisis. Investments more or less, well, still better in 1980s, but better also than two previous crises. And then in terms of exports, we're still much positive, uh, better than the world financial crisis and the crisis of the 80s. So it's moderately better now in this regard. We look, sorry, we look at the uh, <clears throat> agriculture and industry first in this table. And we can see, observe that agriculture has performed better in this crisis. Uh, but uh, industry is somehow lag, lagged a little bit, but better still than the 1980s. Where we stand out the clearly better will be in interest rates, which T-bill rates are, are very much lower than they were before, and inflation rates as well. So then now we move to the debt and exchange rate issues where we can see that the although the peso has been depreciating uh, in the last three years the, the increase has been much less than compared to the increases in the past years in the past crisis our international reserves in terms of months of imports have been also been better than previous crisis and our external debt is way much better than it was uh, during the first a crisis of the 80s and the Asian and world financial crisis. Now, also very important in this regard is the percent of interest expense uh, to total national government spending, which we can see is half of what it was in those two crises. Clearly in this regard, we are better than it was in the past. So we move on now to looking at it a little closer. The debt ratio, of course, was lowest in 2019, uh, but it rose to 60.5% in 2021, which, however, was, was the level midway in the GMA administration, and it get, kept going down. Why? Because there was fast growth. There's also low interest rates. By the way, even if interest rates are not are rising, they're still low compared to then. Uh, in 2018, for example, 10-year uh, bond yields uh, for almost nine months stayed at around 8%. We're not quite, quite close to that. And so I forecast that we'll reach a debt ratio of 65 to 66% in 2022 and it remain below 70% in 2023. But what is more important is really the interest expense as a percentage of national government expenditures, which is still quite low. You have to remember that the, the important thing here is the, the difference between the, 
the the 31 percent the height uh, and then the 10 percent now which is creates you a 20 percent uh, spread that was enabled us to have that construction and infrastructure boom okay so we look at the at bbm and the prospects of philippine growth with this and first look at the cabinet appointments uh, we have the bsp dof dti fred pasqual dpwh uh, mark mark Banoa, the otr uh, and you know, now very recently doe these are really experts and people who are uh, very good uh, at their jobs uh, i would say i put an excellent rating for the choices uh, and one of the things that they will focus on will be try to lower the budget deficits not that it's sort of uh, overarching goal because the overarching goal is to re reduce poverty rates but uh, it will provide us leeway to grow faster in the future now there's special focus that uh, the president has taken because by getting hold of the agriculture portfolio initially at least uh, which shows his importance and priority that he will give to it no? because that in it actually is the lagging sector and the you know the source of the poverty in the country most of the poverty is there in the agriculture sector now let's take a look at power and infrastructure uh, because of the financial constraints uh, and also uh, a bit of overemphasis in uh, odas in the previous administration we will likely see more PPPs uh, in this administration because that means the president will be committed to a double barrel approach to infrastructure. It's not only the government, but government plus private sector. Uh, however, for the private sector to get into the into things, the, the BI, BOT IRR, implementing regulations and, or, and the law needs updating. Uh, the IRR was revised just uh, before, uh, that's May last, this year, and is not very friendly to uh, investors. Um, and also the law itself is ready for updating, just did not catch the, the end of Congress. Uh, Congressman Salceda is again willing to take the gadgets for this. And, we expect it to be revised fairly soon. Now, agriculture, the, the focus has been, will be on irrigation, cold and dry storage, and then uh, high value crops with, without disreg you know, disregarding the uh, key crops of the, the country. So in short, uh, look, for me, it looks positive. Uh, and, we now focus on the, the last issue of credit upgrade, where these metrics may be more important. Okay, gross international reserves. If we look at it, uh, we were we were above our our neighbors, our peers, and we see that that uh, Malaysia was much, you know, it's about half of us. And then Vietnam, one of the darlings of the region, uh, very low, 3.9, and Indonesia, eight, eight months. So we're okay there. Uh, this may be something that people may be worrying about, the exchange rate. Uh, but if you can look at this graph together with the US dollar weighted uh, exchange rate, uh, it's just tracking US dollar strength. Um, however, there's the added pressure provided by the trade deficits, which has been rising fast due to the oil prices. Uh, we, last year, we had a record high of 43 billion in trade deficit and expect, I expect it to reach 50 billion this year. Uh, but the, precisely the exchange rate is the mechanism by which the economy adjusts to, to that and the thing, the idea that it's going to hurt the country, the exchange rate is, is not, it's not well-founded. 
because again, for one, we have OFW remittances, which contribute to the income of the country. Uh, and you see the growth of the, of the peso uh, in peso terms, the OFW in peso terms, they're in the red line. And then uh, we have the, and, and that's growing closer to 10% due to the depreciation. Uh, in the case of BPO, which is catching up with our uh, OFW remittances, it was 28 billion in 2021, and it's growing to go at least by 6% this year. And in segments that were sort of unheard of before, as a matter of fact, uh, the voice uh, call centers uh, have become less than 50% uh, of, uh, of uh, BPO earnings. So these two can offset actually the, the deficit, but to a certain extent. Um, and with that, the external sector becomes still strong uh, compared to ASEAN where you have Malaysia IA minus with such a high debt ratio. Uh, and we, since we said we have a steady source of WS and BPOs. And with the emerging segments being catered to by RBPO. So I see a low probability of any downgrade in 2022 and 2023. Um, now, this is another, new, another aspect of the growth story, which is the new jobs created. You can see in this graph that, uh, and it does not include that the May, because it just came out, it's May is positive 600 plus jobs. So overall, you can see there are four major downs, uh, much bigger growth. And so that's why uh, employment reached a record high of 47 million in March 2022. Uh, and that has uh, flow, overflowed into improving consumer confidence as reported by the BSP survey. As you can see everything here, whether it be for the current quarter, the next quarter, the next 12 months, they're all moving up. Okay, with that, uh, I'll present now my, uh, my forecast for the uh, economy. Uh, inflation rate at 5%, peso dollar rate should go back between 54, 55, uh, because by towards the end of the year, last quarter, you have a big inflow of OFW remittances. International service would be around 104 and then the GDP growth of 67%, led by the industry sector, which is manufacturing and construction, which also have been the ones providing for job growth in the industry sector. In summary, so we do expect faster GDP growth this year, next year. Inflation will be above target in 2022, not uh, the doing of the BSP, but uh, due to external reasons. Uh, we are in a better economic situation compared to past crises. BBM will generally be positive for growth, both not only in terms of people, but also the policies that are being uh, prioritized. And I don't see any credit downgrades. So what are the caveats? Downside of my, my forecast would be if inflation remain, you know, goes faster and remains high. Uh, that's not my view though. I mean, prolonged uh, Russia-Ukraine war, which it prevents the commodity markets, especially crude oil, from getting into the market and putting pressure downwards. You have also prone to natural disasters. Fourthly, we might uh, overreact to supposed pandemics of lockdowns, which, however, I don't think the president is uh, very much in favor of. And finally, uh, what about Fed policy rate hikes? I think that they won't pull up local interest rates that much because U.S. inflation is simply much higher than the Philippine inflation by at least 250 basis points. So uh, I'm, I'm quite fairly optimistic that we can recover quite fast. Uh, maybe not as fast as originally planned, but we'll get there. Thank you, and we'll uh, try to answer your questions later on. Thank you very much, Dr. Abola. Don't uh, don't disappear just yet because we will have some questions.
But I thought that was okay. quite comforting for the audience. I hope they think that the same way. Again, if I may just summarize what you had just said, faster GDP is expected in 2022 and 2023. There is no expectation of any credit downgrade in 2022 or 2023 as well. Stronger economic situation than previous crisis, despite the headwinds that remain, and which is high inflation, the Russia-Ukraine war, and the natural disasters. Okay, so I think that no matter what, we are well poised to weather this storm. Let's see if there are any questions to Dr. Abola regarding his presentation. Uh, Doc, are you there? Okay, you are there. All right, I have a question here from the floor. That, um, first, how will the looming U.S. recession play out for emerging markets, especially the Philippines, where the U.S. is our biggest source of remittances and BPO business, as well as one of our biggest export markets? Um, I think the recession it will have an effect, but not that much uh, compared to other countries because uh, our exports are a smaller, much smaller percentage of GDP. Uh, secondly, exports to the U.S. are only 15% of our total exports. Uh, and, uh, well, the, the only reason why remittances are come from the U.S. is because they are coursed through U.S. banks. The, not that it's really the majority. Uh, there's a big question there. There a lot of uncertainty because, for instance, in Saudi Arabia alone, uh, houses 2 million Filipinos. So uh, in the Middle East, to get all together, will outnumber those in the United States. Um, so yes, there will be an effect. But since I mentioned earlier, I emphasize that our growth is demand-driven, domestic demand-driven. It will be our construction, our infrastructure, uh, um, and um, invest other sp investment spending that will take us to the growth path that we are headed for. Okay, thank you for that, Dr. Bola. There's another question, right? and um, you touched up on BBM's, um, you know, um, perception for growth, right? So the question is, how do you view the new set of economic managers under the new administration? Do you have any expectation how the new administration's economic policies will shape up? Well, you can see that uh, these people that he has appointed are not new in the sense new to the to the game I meaning to the economic situation the uh diokno ben and ben diokno philip uh and the popo lotelia are they have been they're just been there and they have the expertise and i think they're quite independent uh and they have i mean this have very strong personalities yeah uh and can you know there is a question that question that puts it that well can they withstand pressure from bbm as a matter of fact i think bbm is pragmatic enough to realize that he has to rely on the economic team if he's going to deliver on the growth that he has promised to us okay all right that's true that's very true okay and maybe one more um, amidst fears of global economic slowdown, outlook for the Philippine economy remains robust, as you, would, as you had presented. While you have outlined both the upside and the downside risks to growth, what would you consider to be a major risk that, will, that we need to closely monitor so that we are able to sustain the growth and your projected numbers? I think still it still is... Uh... Russia Ukraine war. It gets prolonged beyond this year or beyond the fourth quarter of this year. Um, we might run into rougher waters. Uh, but because that is linked to crude oil prices, commodity prices, wheat prices have gone up by 30%. And uh, so, and Pandesal is shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why it, it for me, that is a major factor, but it can also be resolved e earlier, in which case the growth story will be, will be realized sooner. 
Thank, thanks, Dr. Mola. And one more last. There's a lot of questions. So what we'll try to do is we will try to consolidate them also. And then if we don't have time after each speaker, then we will try to tackle them during the panel discussion. But I thought that this question was quite interesting. So if you may, in your models, how sensitive is inflation rate to FX movements? To be clear for every one peso depreciation in the peso, how much does it Actually, uh, it's our model is uh, not, not the peso but uh, percentage. Uh, the pass through is very small, actually. Uh, contrary to a popular conception, it's only about for every 10% increase in the exchange rate, you add 0.6% to the inflation rate. <laughs> I mean, that's small, no? right? I mean, uh relatively to relative to other factors okay thank you dr uh, Bala. the bsp uh, people also have come up with similar conclusions i mean their st own studies okay all right like i said now we'll, we'll consolidate more for uh, the panel discussion later on but thank you for that presentation dr Bala.